in prayer. Father, Lord, we want to thank you tonight that you are the God of telecommunications. You are the God of the wires. You are the God of the internet. You are the God of the heavens. You are the God of the earth. You are the God of everything. Nothing catches you by surprise. So, Lord, we pray tonight that this time that we will spend together with your saints across the world will bring glory to your name, bring increase to our spirit man, uh, give us the strength, O oh Lord, to grow deeper, deeper roots with you, deeper walk with you, deeper understanding with you, Lord, deeper knowledge in your word, deeper readiness to do all that you called us to do. It's what we pray for tonight, O oh God, open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirit being, wherever your saints are listening from tonight, O oh God, or those who will hit on the replay button, minister to them, O oh God, and glorify your name. I take authority over every contrary spirit and power that may want to militate against the word or pluck away the word that has been sown in the hearts of men today. I ask you in Jesus' name to go into captivity. Let the saints of God have premium knowledge and understanding of the word of God tonight. To the glory of his name, we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And God's own people say, Amen, Amen to the glory of God the Father. Tonight, we are, by the grace of God, going to be talking about ministry of helps, like you have seen right there over the uh, program. It's Sammy Joseph Ministries. It's posted to Sammy Joseph Ministries, not the Sammy Joseph right here on. I'm still having a little bit of struggle right here. I'm sorry. Um, it's not showing on Sammy Joseph um, page. It's posted to Sammy Joseph Ministries page. However, we will find something done at the end of the program. So tonight we want to talk about, um, you know, a recap of the uh, series that we've been talking about for some time now, Christian Charity, Christian Benevolence, Christian Charity and Benevolence. But before we do that today, let me just quickly add one more thing to the Christian Charity Series, the Ministry of Helps, Ministry of Helps. First Corinthians, let's see very quickly, First Corinthians and chapter 12, First Corinthians and chapter 12, and let us see what the Apostle Paul has to say to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles, then gifts of healings, gifts of, the next one is helps government or governments, diversity of tongues. Now, so obviously God has set in the spiritual gifts in the body of Christ, the ministry of helps, ministry of helps. It's a gift of God. It's, it's the gifting of God. Uh, it's uh, uh, God who calls people to different parts of the ministry. And that's exactly what the Ministry of Help does. It helps. It ministers helps. It administers helps to people in need. In Acts 26 and verse 22, Acts of the Apostles, and 26 and verse 22, we see there Paul talking or giving his testimony before King Agrippa uh, before he will be on his way to Jerusalem, or I'm sorry, to Rome, 
Paul the Apostle was saying and giving testimony before King Agrippa, Acts of the Apostles 26 and verse 22, having therefore obtained help of God. I continue unto this day witnessing both the small and great, saying, None other things than those which the prophets and Moses this did say should come to pass. That Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. But Paul says that he received the help of God. How do you receive the help of God? God sends helpers to you. Say it again, Pastor. That's how you receive the help of God. God will send helpers to you. How many of you remember the time that David was going to uh, find his wives and his uh, soldiers' wives and children and this uh, Moradin team had come, the Amalekites, in the uh, book of Samuel, they had come to raid and take them away. And, uh, and everyone thought, the Bible says, uh, thought of stoning King David. He wasn't a king then, but he was a general. They thought of killing him. And the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. However, he would ask the priest, say, bring me the ephod and let me inquire from God. Should I pursue or should I relent? And God says, pursue, you will pursue, you will overtake, you will recover all. You will pursue, you'll overtake, and you'll recover all. In pursuing, in overtaking, recovering all, there was an Egyptian man that belonged to the enemy's camp, to the Amalekites, and maybe he had a bowel disease in the night, or he was sick and slow, <laughs> and, uh, and they left him to die in the desert. When the third day, he had not eaten, he had not drank, he had not eaten nothing, we can as well say that he was fasting, <laughs> compulsory fasting. There are some of you that don't believe in fasting. There are some of you that don't want to lose no weight. You don't want to shed no weight. Uh, when we're talking about spiritual authorities and, and how you will reach out to your goal and destiny and how you will find your destiny helpers, God will arrange circumstances and situations to line up to be a blessing to you. And so he would have to wait upon the Lord and fast. He would have to wait upon the Lord in the desert. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. That's all. He'll be crying out to God. But the real truth of the matter is that he was left to die. He was left to die in the wilderness. He was left to die in the wilderness. And but God used that man who was left to die in the wilderness, that man who was left to die in the wilderness, will be the one that the soldiers of David will stumble upon, and stumbling upon him, will be asking him, which team do you belong to? Where are you from? What are you doing here? What's happening to you? Well, I belong to the Amalekites, and they are the ones that raided Ziklag, and to captive all your people, but, but can you take us to them? Oh yes, I can take you, provided, provided. You promise me that you'll not betray me to the hands of my masters. You promise me that you will give me citizenship of Israel. All right, you promise me that you'll shelter me. And David says, we'll do everything for you. So he took them over, he led them over to the point where David will fall upon them and recover everything that the Amalekites are taken away from him. So when we're talking about ministry of helps, we're talking about uh, 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 
people that God will lead into your ways. Help us of destinies. Help us of destinies. Write it down. Write it down. In the ministry of helps, we have help us of destinies. Paul says, I received the help of God. There were many people that were ministering to Paul on his journeys, ministering to Paul in his ministries. Epaphroditus was one of them. He was one of the helpers of Paul. Timothy was another son in the spirit. He was a helper of the ministry of Paul, the apostle. Let me show you very quickly also, uh, you know, Christian charity about the ministry of helps, about how God will send people to come help you do projects and, you know, erect uh, great buildings and, and stuff. You know, the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace is the largest uh, uh, church, as it were, largest building uh, in the world. It was built by the former president of Côte d'Ivoire, President Oufouint Boignier. Boignier, I think in 1985, in the late 80s, and, and this man put it in one village right there in Yamusukro, if I'm right. And, uh, and but, but they said, the, the commentator said that he was able to, to do that uh, for the Catholic Church. He was able to do that because he had cheap masonry, cheap labor, cheap labor in Africa. They put that basilica, the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace, close to 330 million U.S. dollars of those days. I don't know what the worth will be today, but it's still there, right there, in the village of Yamoussoukro, in Côte d'Ivoire, the largest church in the world, the largest church building in the world, uh, is right there, and this guy was able to harness together the powers and the blessings that the local, uh, uh, you know, uh, French people, you know, French West African people, uh, you know, the, the followers of the, of the Catholic Church, uh, you know, came in, in their thousands and tens of thousands to offer cheap labor to get that done. Guess what? God can send you builders to help you build your home. Oh, yeah. God can send you builders to help you build your home, can send you uh, helpers of destinies, ministry of helps, Christian charity, to help you raise your, your business, to help you raise your ministry, to help you, to help you, you know, uh, come and babysit your children. We're talking about ministry of helps tonight. And then I will recap, at the half hour, we'll recap all what we have learned on Christian charity. That's exactly how Solomon, the son of David, King Solomon, was also able to build the temple in Jerusalem. How do you know that, Pastor? First Kings chapter 7. First Kings in chapter 7 and verse 1. Solomon was building his own house 13 years and finished all his house in 13 years. But first he will build the house of God. Build that for seven years. In verse 37 of the 6th chapter. But guess who helped him? Guess who helped him to do all this? We find that in 1 Kings 7 and 13. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram. Is there? Hiram out of Tyre. He fetched Hiram out of Tyre. It is Christian charity for Hiram to, to yield to the fetching or the invitation of King Solomon. Hiram, my father proposed in his heart to build a temple to the Lord. However, God said that he was a bloody man. Yeah, that's what God said to David. You're a bloody man. You're not going to build But David had provided all the materials, all the materials needed for the building of the house of the Lord. Everything was pro provided and produced. And so now we need to put everything together 
and Solomon was the wisest man in his time, God laid in his heart the name of Hiram from Tyre. Remember that his father David had good relationship with all the other kings of the neighboring countries or neighboring towns and cities and stuff. And so uh, when he died, uh, a good rapport, good relationship carried on. And that's, that's again one thing that you also must want to continue. The good name of your father, the good relationships that your father left behind, your mother left behind. Uh, you, you must, don't be like that king uh, that, that, that said that he was going to raise the taxes and eventually was now going to break away the 12 kingdoms now separated into 10 kingdoms of the north and two kingdoms in the south. Uh, don't, don't, don't be like him. Don't be like him. Uh, he raised the taxes. Uh, he said, my father has done this to you, but I'm going to do double of what my father had done to you. And, and Israel you know, had to secede as it were at that time, broken into different uh, components. Look at verse 13. So Hiram was sent and fetched out from the country of Tyre. Verse 14, he was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali. His father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. Listen to me, a worker in brass, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and did all the work. Okay? It may be that you also need to ask God today for men and women that are skilled builders, that are filled with the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, that are cunning to work in all works of brass that God will bring them to you to help you build that which God has called you to build. So I am, you know, concluding this uh, topic of Christian charity today with a ministry of helps. There are some people that are called of God just to help you to build. They help you to build. They help you to solidify. They help you to reinforce. You know, when you're building, you know, uh, a house and you have to put pillars, pillars, I say pillars, pillars and beams. <laughs> Pastor, wake up now, wake up, Sammy, wake up. Pillars and beams to uphold the building. These are the ones. These are the ones. Uh, some of you need to repair the relationship between you and the goodwill between you and your grandparents. Say it again, Pastor. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Ministry of helps. Some of you need your grandparents now. Some of you need your parents. You need your parents, but you are not. You're too proud. You're too proud to ask for help. Some of you have been nasty against your grandparents and now you're raising your children and you need to get, you know, to, you know, cut some business and look for money and go to work and, and you only were, were wishing in, in the backside of your heart that you wished that your grandparent, you did not, you did not break relationship with them. Well, it's not too late. Grandparents are gifts from God particularly skilled in the area of ministry of helps. Maybe tonight the Holy Spirit is speaking to you to reach out to mend those relationships. So, talking about the ministry of helps, we discover, I'm talking about the uh, recap of Christian charity we notice that charity is from the word uh, charitable, benevolence, goodness, merciful kindness, uh, uh, forgiving and being forgiven, uh, receiving help from God, 
uh, encouraging others in the times of, of distress, times of need, uh, standing there with them when things are rough and tough, uh, putting your back on the ground for others to, to, climb, to climb on your back, to rise, giving the advantage to another one. When we're talking about giving the advantage to another one, we also, we made it very clear that Christian charity is to be like God, is to be like God. Jesus says, be ye merciful as your Father which is in heaven is merciful. Be ye kind as your Father which is in heaven is kind. It's Christian charity is to be merciful, like God is merciful. Now, Christian charity, it's, it's, it's our Christian duty. It is our Christian duty. It's, it's, it's who we are in Christ Jesus. It's not that it's a gift of the Spirit. Uh -uh. Christian charity is not a gift of the Spirit. It's actually a fruit of the Spirit. You cultivate. You have to cultivate fruits and trees or tree-bearing fruits. Or fruit, should I say fruit-bearing trees? <laughs> tree-bearing fruits. Uh, Fruit-bearing trees are always cultivated. You have to cultivate them. You have to grow them. You have to pump the iron. I remember saying the other time that God uses the stressful times in our lives, uh, the bad experiences that we go through, to form who we become in His mercy. Uh, do not despise the days of small beginning. Do not despise the days when you know, God had to rebuke you or had to, you know, correct you. Uh, these are good signs that God is, is, is working on you, is, is, is shaping you, is sharpening you like, like a tool uh, of, of, of his trade. Do not, do not, do not grumble against the Lord when he begins to work on you. Do not grumble against the Lord when he begins to to, to file you, to cut you, to, 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 to pieces, to, to shape the kind of shape that he wants you to be. Sometimes we want to be something else that God doesn't want us to be like, and so, and so he begins to now work upon our hearts and begins to challenge our lives. We said that the word Christian charity or charity is from the word agapeo, that is to love in a moral or social sense. And agape is to love like God. And we said that whenever you love like God, uh, the influences of, of godliness will follow you. Christian benevolence and affection and good works will have to show forth from your loving God. Benevolence is kindness, kind heartedness, warm heartedness, tender hearted, charitable, charity, loving kindness. And we said it that when we're talking about Christian charity, uh, we have to be careful of how we consume or how we live our lives. We say that from the lifestyles of the Corinthians, that there be some that were, you know, uh, not really practicing these things like God wanted them to practice, that they were manifesting in their love feasts of charity, uh, uh, you know, signs of uh, narcissism, and uh, and. They, they, weren't, they weren't doing the will of God. They, they, they were eating and didn't care about the brother who did not have a strong conscience like they had. And we said it the other time that Paul the Apostle says in 1 Corinthians 8 and 4 to, through 7 that if you offend or wound a young Christian's conscience because your conscience is very hard and and you have knowledge, you have freedom, you can do anything you want, and you don't care about, you know, that young Christian, and you want their conscience, the Bible says that you sin against the Lord. 
We also talk about Christian charity in the life of Philemon. Uh, and you can read the book of Philemon when you get back home or, yeah, well, you're at home now, but hopefully you're hearing this from home. Uh, but we said, we said that Christian charity first can also be seen in the life of Philemon and his, uh, you know, uh, slave Onesimus. Onesimus was a fugitive and he was a thief. He had stolen and, and run away from his master. And we saw there in the story of Philemon and Onesimus uh, with the, their spiritual father, Paul the Apostle, you see, Christian charity is saying that, that you accept him back and don't kill him, even though you have the right to kill him, but don't kill him because it's, it's much more useful to you now as a born-again Christian, than born-again brother, than he was as a slave to you. So, so accept him back into the fold. But we also see Christian charity that, that the spiritual father did not have did not did not have the the effrontery to force or enforce uh, his will, even though his will was the right will of God for their lives. He did not enforce his will upon Philemon's will. He asks Philemon to seek the face of the Lord and decide exactly what he will do with Onesimus the fugitive. So Paul will urge Onesimus to do the right thing and obey the rules of God, obey the rules of Christian charity, and have him back. Have him back. In Christian charity, we also mention the fact that we are generous people. We are very generous people in the sense that we saw right there in the doctrine of restitution uh, in talking about the life of, of our dear brother Zacchaeus in Luke 19. And in this, I, I, I posted a question the other time about people that say that we are in the time of grace and we don't need to sow a seed or, you know, sow unto God our tithe and, and, and stuff. And I say, Zacchaeus told Jesus, he says, if I ever took away from anybody, I return to them in restitution 400%. And this guy was in the New Testament. Even though Christ had not died on the cross and been raised again and given power to the church to be able to exemplify in Christian charitable giving, we see that if we really love the Lord, we will give all our heart. That's what Jesus says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and will. And your will is your seat of learning, your seat of decision making. That's why you decide to marry one person and not marry the other one. It's your will. It's, it's a sovereign act of God and a sovereign gift of God given and granted to every human being to have a free will. Nobody can enforce your will. If you find people enforcing your will, it's witchcraft. And so Christian charity is given to all, given to God all with a spirit of release from our hearts. We said also that Christian Charity opens a huge safe deposit account with families and friends. I think I've earlier mentioned that, that you have to expand your coast, expand the base of goodwill, the goodwill base that you have, you know, uh, deposit account. We saw that in the story of Philemon. Paul says, uh, write it to my account that I have with you. Christian charity opens an account with his spiritual children, opens an account with his physical children, opens an account with the spiritual parents, opens an account with the friends, the families that he or she has. 
Christian generosity to the addicts, we talked about the addicts and the poor, we talked about the poor, the fatherless, the, the widows, the poor, the fatherless, the widows, and in the Old Testament, in the law, God took the strangers, strangers amongst you into consideration. Christian charity, Deuteronomy 24, 19 through 22, Leviticus 23, 22, and Matthew 6, 42 to 48. Uh, we, we have alms, I've mentioned it the other times, that we give to the poor. Uh, alms, and the Bible says when you do something with your right hand, you give an arm with your right hand, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Okay, so in our, in our generosity, in our generous Christian giving, or Christian generous giving, uh, we have the arms, we have the, uh, the, uh, we have the vows. Vows are, you know, words that you say to God, and you say, Lord, if you get me out of this, particularly in the times of trouble, say, Lord, if you get me out of this, trouble or oh Lord if you open my womb and give me a child that's what the mother of Samuel said I'll give the child back to you and God heard God heard our prayer and she did what she said she was going to do to the Lord she brought the child Samuel back to the Lord and gave the Bible says loaned unto the Lord all the days of his life and we know that the word of God says in Proverbs that anyone that uh, uh, loans unto the Lord or lends unto the Lord, uh, you know, uh, gives to the poor, lends unto the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Anyone that gives to the poor, lends to the Lord. And you know, if you lend money to somebody, that means you become the creditor. That means the other guy becomes the debtor. Now, the debtor, every time you're paying back, you will pay back. That's, that's where you find the law of higher purchase. Higher purchase. It's compounded interest. Are you listening to me? Higher purchase is compounded interest. That's what God says you do. Anytime you're giving to the poor who is genuine, you are lending to the Lord. You become a lender to God. God becomes a borrower. God becomes a debtor. And the Bible says that God is not a debtor of any man's. In other words, if you give to the Lord, if you lend to the Lord, you are going to get compounded interest upon your principal amount in mathematics or economics we say principal principal is that which you lend to the Lord maybe you gave somebody who is poor God says give a hundred pounds you gave a hundred with a good heart happily because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver in your heart to the Lord some days later could be some weeks later, could be some months later, I don't know. I don't know. God decides to open, uh, open the doors of heaven to you and somebody is writing you a check for 10,000 or 100,000. Now that's good business. That's, a, that's the kind of business I like to do. That is good business. You know, I gave 100 and I'm getting 100,000 back. Uh, it's not possible in real life in this world, uh, the economy of this world does not work like that. However, the economy of heaven says, when you give to the, Lord, to, the, to the poor, you are lending unto the Lord, and the Lord will give back unto you that which you have given, and much more than you have given. Romans 8.14 says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We want to be very careful that we are given not to the rascals. We are not given over to uh, people who are arm twisters. Say it again, Pastor. We are not going to be given over to the rascals. We are not going to be given over to do nothing bombers. Do nothing bombers, yeah. Right on their bomb, do no nothing. Sig in their mouth, you know, begging for money. The Bible says, he that does not work should not eat. That is your Christian attitude towards somebody who refuses to work. There, there are genuinely poor people, and there are people who make themselves deliberately poor. When you find, you're going to have to ask the Holy Spirit, because 
you know, some of us, when we were younger, we give to everyone that gave, that, that came to us to ask for, for, for an arm or for beg for money. Uh-uh. As I began to grow in the spirit realm, I discovered that even though the bowel of mercy in me wants to help everybody, not everyone that I give unto will, will give me the equal yield in the, in the kingdom of God or before God. If I give my money over to the bummer, instead of giving my money over to a genuinely poor, the money I give to the bummer is like the seed in the ocean that the shark and the small fishes or big fishes come take it away. The big fish are always going to take your money because if you sow in the water in the, in the ocean, you're not sowing in the ground. The Bible says you sow in good ground. You sow in good ground. The ocean is not a place. The ocean is a place for sharks. It's not a place where your seed can grow. Your seed will never grow in the ocean. So, do not give to bombers. Yeah, do not. No, 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 we don't do it. Let me help you. Can I help? No, 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 no. Drive past. No, 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 no. Don't encourage laziness. Why? Because if you were lazy, you wouldn't have that, had the money that you had or the wealth that you had. Uh, you are supposed to help others to teach them how to catch fish, not teach people how to come to your table and eat fish at your table all of the time. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3, verses 10, 11, 12, 13, they are disorderly, they are lazy bombs, they are busybodies. Therefore, do not give to them. That's how you know. They are disorderly, they are lazy bombs, they are busybodies. Ephesians 4.28 says, Let him that stole used to steal, steal no more, but rather let him labor. They don't want to labor, and they want to spend your money. You're not going to spend my money that way. Mm -mm. Say to them, no, 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 no. Doing honest work with his hands instead, so that he will have something to share with the poor that needs his help. This is the summary of Christian charity that I've been on for the past five weeks this month of September. Today is the last day of September. That's why the Holy Spirit is sending this across your way today to consider how you do your Christian charity. I added lastly today, Ministry of Helps. Ministry of Helps. Ministry of Helps also, you know, is not just helpers of destiny or people who come to help you to grow your ministry or your work or your building like Hiram. He's a skilled guy from Tyre and Solomon sent for him to come and help build, you know, and he did a fantastic job. Now, the same way with a husband or a wife. Bible calls them help meet. All right? The Bible says to uh, Adam, I will give you a help meet. A help meet is help that is meant for you. Help that is meant for you. Help. There is someone for somebody on this face of this earth, uh, you say, Pastor, that can't be possible. Well, it won't be possible. It will not be possible if you say it will not be possible. The Bible says, be it unto you according to your faith. The Bible says in Isaiah, it says, mark this. Write this down in the journal of the book of the Lord. None of these shall lack their mates. If you say it's not possible, it will not be possible to you. But if you, with me, decree today that all things are possible to him that believes, there is one man for one woman on the face of the earth that will trust the Lord, who will be helpmate for them. Listen to me. As I'm talking about helpmate right now, the Holy Spirit is telling me to remind you also that anytime you have the original you must have counterfeits. 
Say it again, Pastor. Anytime, anywhere you have the original, you must be ready to fight and wade off, wade off the counterfeits. There will be counterfeits on the earth. Your prayer to God should be that God should deliver you away from every counterfeit and instead lead you to the help that is meant, your help meet is the help that is meant for you in Jesus' name. Part of ministry of helps is also to become a spiritual partner, a ministry partner with the ministry or the ministries that is or are blessing your life. Listen, this is how it works. Your tithe belongs to the house where you are born or where you are fed, the house that feeds you. The house that feeds you is entitled to receive the tithe from you. Your offerings belong to your house and many other places, as many as the Lord will lay upon your heart to give charitably unto them. It may be quarterly, maybe once in a month, maybe weekly, maybe once in a year, as God lays upon your heart to become a ministry partner with that ministry that has blessed your life. Uh, if the Holy Spirit has ministered to you or is ministering to you to become a partner with Sammy Joseph Ministries, how do you become a partner with Sammy Joseph Ministries? It's very easy. It will cost you three pounds a month, at least three pounds a month, you know, to become our partner. For, so for 36 pounds in a whole year, you can become a partner with our ministry and say, Sammy, I want to support your arms like Aaron, uh, you know, support Aaron and Hor, support the hands of Moses in the fight against the Amalekites on that day. If you like to do that, uh, you prayerfully talk to the Lord. We do not have the right to enforce. We do not have the right to force. We do not have the right to enforce. We do not have to legislate. We don't have the right to do that. It's got to be between you and God. And if God ministers to you to become a ministry partner with Sammy Joseph Ministries, all you have to do is go over to www.org. I'm sorry, www.harvestways. I almost forgot that. I got to drink some water now. www.harvestways.org. And go to Covenant Partnership with us and fill out your form and click all the buttons you need to click. You will see there all the needs that we have. We have need like today. You can see that we were having some technical difficulties. We need new cameras. We need uh, new recording equipment. You know, we need uh, uh, many, many things. Okay. It's right there on our website. Anything that the Holy Spirit lays upon your heart to do, that alone you make sure that you do. I really want to thank you tonight. I couldn't get to see your questions. I'm so sorry. I couldn't find myself on the normal page of the uh, Sammy, Dr. Sammy O. Joseph to take your questions tonight. But if you leave me your questions, by the grace of God, after the broadcast, I will get back to you and put the answers right there in the public, in the public comment section, public domain. Or if you write me to admin at harvestways.org, uh, email admin at harvestways.org, by the grace of God, I will get back to you. If you pray right in the comment section under that, under there, under this preaching as well, by the grace of God, I will answer you every question, uh, provided your questions are legitimate and, and legal and reasonable. If your questions are not falling in line with these guidelines, you'll be very sure that we'll do the appropriate thing. The appropriate thing is to remove your question or to block you off <laughs> and put you right where, where you belong. 
I pray that you've been blessed by this ministration. I'd like to hear from you. If you like to uh, have me uh, study on uh, any topic that is not very clear to you, a topic that is, that is, that is you know, unclear, that is not crystal clear, not crystal crispy clear to you, uh, that you like us to explore together on this interactive Bible study, uh, please write me again to admin at harvestways.org or inbox me or DM me at any of these uh, uh, social media apps to the glory of God the Father. Again, I really want to apologize tonight that I couldn't get to read your questions and we were having some technical issues right here. Uh, but the Almighty God knows that we also are trusting God on every side to make sure we can come to you every week. So pray for us, pray for us, support us. Harvestways.org is the place you will find us. I really appreciate you. I really thank God for your life. Lastly tonight, if you have not come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the door is open right now. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins today. Forgive my sins today. Uh, write my name, Jesus, in the Lamb's book of life and make me a child of God tonight. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Bible says you become a child of God. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Romans in chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. So if you pray that prayer, the Bible says you become a child of God. I'd like to hear from you. Write me to admin at harvestways.org. I will come to you on Sunday by the grace of God with an entirely new subject that we will be exploring together and developing through the month of October. Until I come your way, next time, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his glorious eyes to shine upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Again, good night and bye-bye.